फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अमडेकर इन दिस प्रेजेंट सीरीज वेल वी आर डिस्कसिंग डिफरेंट मिमिक्स दैट वी सी इन क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मोमेंट डिसऑर्डर मिमिक्स वी आर ऑल अवेयर दैट अ टिपिकल मोमेंट डिसऑर्डर प्रेजेंस एज अ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ इन वॉलेंट्री मोमेंट्स विच कैनॉट बी सप्रेस्ड बट दे ऑकर इन अ डिफरेंट फैशन बेस्ड ऑन फ्रीक्वेंसी एम्पलीट्यूड रिदम और वेदर दे आर मेनली प्रॉक्सिमल और डिस्टल वेदर दे आर फाइन और नॉट सो फाइन एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट वी टर्म दैम एज ट्रेमर्स कॉरियर एथेटोसिस माओक्लोनस एट्सेट्रा हवेवर एट टाइम्स द मोमेंट डिसऑर्डर्स कूड ऑल्सो ऑकर विथ अ कॉन्शियस विल टू मूव बट वाइल मूविंग देर इज सम डिस्क्रिप्शन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ आइदर इनिशिएशन और एन एग्जीक्यूशन एज हैपन्स इन टिपिकली अ पार्किसोनिज्म वेयर एन इनिशन ऑफ मूवमेंट इज डिस्ट्रप्टेड एंड ऑल्सो यू हैव अ वेरी शॉर्ट स्टेप्स शफलिंग स्टेप्स so execution is not normal these are classical moment disorders that we know of and they mostly occur in wakeful state though they may also occur in sleep however there are many mimics what looks like a moment disorder may not be really a typical moment disorder and what are the clues of that the first and foremost is it does not follow a typical characteristic of what you can name as a tremor chorea myoclonus etc but superficially they look very similar but more important is they are at least partially suppressible if not long term suppression they are often stimulus sensitive that means some trigger brings them out they are mostly benign they are mostly self limiting they have a favorable outcome they often don't need interventions but they certainly look like abnormal movements and we need to differentiate them well for example a typical situation that occurs is you have a focal aware seizure which means the patient who gets a focal seizure is totally conscious and all that he may have is just stiffness of one limb which to begin with might look like a moment disorder but it is just one of its episodes it is very brief it is self limiting and it has some neurological findings not very difficult to make out it may recur but not recur immediately it's not frequent and this is how it may be mistaken as a moment disorder same thing may happen i recall seeing an infant who had a periodic upward gaze otherwise he was fine he was developing well he had nothing neurological and this might disappear over time by itself and therefore this is not really a moment disorder but a moment disorder mimic same thing may happen in what looks like a myoclonus is not really a myoclonus as a moment disorder but this is like tetanus for example you have spasms but this is not a moment disorder typically and of course when a patient gets very high fever he has muscle contractions we call it rigors these are not moment disorders but they are stimulus sensitive they are triggered by high fever and therefore the rigors similar thing may happen in a neuro neurological disorder like decerebrate spasms or a decorticate spasms these are not moment disorders but to begin with may sound like a typical 
uh, movement disorder. Having talked about such neurological disorders which may sound like a movement disorder but are not, there are many other benign conditions where they very simulate and mimic a primary movement disorder. How do you get a clue that these could be benign? For example, they are very often stimulus sensitive. That means they are triggered. They often occur even in sleep but may occur when in a wakeful state and they do not follow any typical characteristics of a movement disorder that we talk about like tremors or chorea or myoclonus but they superficially may look like that but there are some atypicalities. What is more important is they have a very favorable outcome. They are often self-limiting and therefore they need no intervention but they need just the counseling. Having said that, the most important such so-called movement disorder mimics are for example tics. Now tics are brief but frequent. They are stimulus sensitive. There is an urge to move similar movements. Neurologically there is nothing abnormal and they are often triggered by excitement or anxiety or stress and we all know the tics which are benign conditions and they are not movement disorders per se. But similar tics could occur in what is known as the Tourette syndrome where they may have not only the motor tics but also the verbal tics. Most of these patients of Tourette syndrome start somewhere around the childhood and they go on till almost adolescence and it's self-limiting. Again, most of them overcome these kind of so-called abnormal movements but they do not represent a movement disorder per se. But something similar to tics could be the stereotypies. And stereotypies are typically constant. They are not brief and repetitive. And they are often seen in neurodevelopmental disorders like an autism spectrum disorder. And I think they do not represent any movement disorder per se. But yes, they do have something that looks like an abnormal movement and therefore they are mimics. Some of these mimics occur in sleep, like a sleep myoclonus for example. Especially seen in infants, there is suddenly a muscle spasm, they are in deep sleep, but neurologically and developmentally they are all fine and normal. Similarly, some movement disorder mimics like a restless leg syndrome, or a periodic limb movements, or for that matter bruxism for example. When you see them in sleep, they are abnormal movements, but they are not a part of movement disorder and clenching of teeth, which is not uncommon. Then there are some more, like a jitteriness for example. Now jitteriness may sound like an abnormal movement, sometimes lips packing, sometimes fidgeting with hands and these are again due to some emotional stress or anxiety. Same is true about the shuddering attacks for example. There is a sudden shuddering or vibratory movements and this again may be triggered emotionally by excitation or a stress. And we know all rigors occur when a fever is increasing to a very high degree and it looks like a muscle spasm. It is not a movement disorder but it's again stimulus sensitive, triggered by the need for raising body temperature to a very high level. We are all aware of such abnormal movements that we take. And then uh, you have many others which 
a patient does it when he is excited or stressed for soothing purposes like it could be a kind of body shaking or fidgeting now these are the moment that person learns to tide over that stress or anxiety and these are to be observed very carefully because a body rocking for example could be a very normal what looks like an abnormal moment but one has to be very sure that there is no any neurodevelopmental abnormality like again an ADHD or an autism spectrum disorder friends then we also know a condition like spastic newtons spastic newtons is a condition where there is a torticollis there is a nystagmus and you find that these moments of head nodding for example are seen uh, in early childhood and they disappear over time so there are many benign abnormal moments that occur they are not moment disorders but they are abnormal moments all right we need to differentiate them from a neurological abnormal disorder and finally we know that abnormal moments may also occur in hyperthyroidism in wilson disease they may offer occur with vitamin b1 or b12 deficiency disorder they often are seen with uh, side effects of drugs like antidepressants antipsychotics anticonvulsant and also antiemetics like a metoclopramide we all know such abnormal moments are triggered by some stimulus and therefore they need to be differentiated from a pathological moment disorder i hope i have made my points clear and continue to be with us i hope you are enjoying this and please share this information to many of your friends thank you very much